Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. USAA. The family that vacations together stays together. At least that was the plan. Except now the dastardly desk clerk is saying he can't confirm your connecting rooms. Uh, wait, what? That's right, ma'am. You have rooms 201 and 709. No, we cannot be five floors away from our kids. Eh, the doors have double locks. They'll be fine. When you want your connecting rooms confirmed before you arrive, it matters where you stay. Welcome to Hilton. I see your connecting rooms are already confirmed. Hilton, for the stay. This episode is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash SBO. Terms and conditions apply. A vampire walks into a bar and orders a Bloody Mary. The bartender says, Mary, you better scram. If you just read the bio for Dr. Steve, host of Weird Medicine on Sirius XM 103 and made popular by two really comedy shows, Opie and Anthony and Ron and Fez, you would have thought that this guy was was a bit of, uh, you know, a, a clown. Your show was better when you had medical questions. Hey! I've got diphtheria crushing my esophagus. I've got Ebola virus dripping from my nose. I've got the leprosy of the heart valve exacerbating my incredible woes. I want to take my brain out and blast it with the wave, an ultrasonic, echographic, and a pulsating shave. I want a magic pill for all my ailments, the health equivalent to Citizen Kane. And if I don't get it now in the tablet, I think I'm doomed and I'll have to go insane. I want a requiem for my disease, so I'm paging Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve. It's Weird Medicine, the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio. Now a podcast. I'm Dr. Steve with my little pal, Dr. Scott, a traditional Chinese medical practitioner who keeps the alternative medicine weirdos at bay. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Hey, Dr. Steve. This is a show for people who would never listen to a medical show on the radio or the internet. If you have a question, you're embarrassed to take to your regular medical provider. If you can't find an answer any, uh, <laughs> oh boy, find an answer anywhere else, give us a call at 347-766-4323. That's 347. Follow us on Twitter at Weird Medicine or at Dr. Scott WM. Visit our website at drsteve.com for podcasts, medical news, and stuff you can buy. Most importantly, we are not your medical providers. Take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Don't act on anything you hear on this show without talking over with your doctor, nurse practitioner, practical nurse, physician assistant, pharmacist, chiropractor, acupuncturist, yoga master, physical therapist, clinical laboratory scientist, registered dietitian, or whatever. All right, very good. So um, please check out Dr. Scott's website at simplyherbals.net, simplyherbals.net. And uh, check out stuff.drsteve.com, stuff, S-T-U-F-F, dot drsteve.com. Uh, if you just click through, it takes you straight to Amazon. Anything you buy there, it helps keep us on the air. It really it makes a huge difference. But otherwise, if you scroll down, there's cool stuff in there. Very soon, there will be flatus flutes <laughs> on there. And uh, because Daniel is driving me crazy, and so I'll put the the um, <clears throat> flatus flutes on there. I kind of promised him I'd put it on stuff.drsteve.com when he got his website fixed, and then I forgot about it. Mm. Then he said, are you going to put it on your website? And I was like, hell no, I'm not putting that on my website. And he, he thought that he had hurt my feelings or he'd made me mad or something. And then I had hurt feelings, so I'm going to get that up there ASAP. But go to flatusflute.com in the meantime. And then uh, tweakedaudio.com, we haven't talked about them in a little while. Use offer code FLUID and get 33% off. The best earbuds on the market for the price and the best customer service anywhere. And uh, it, uh, this is the last time I think we're promoting this. Noom, N O O M, okay. dot drsteve.com. Lose weight with me. Um, but I, yeah, I'm, I think we've reached sort of the, the end of its lifespan 
for promoting it. And a lot of people did it, and I hope that you all got good results as I did. But <clears throat> if you want to go there, noom.drsteve.com, you get two weeks free and 20% off if you decide to do it. It's only a three-week program. Unlike that other program that you have to give them money for the rest of your life <laughs> and do points and stuff. There's none of that. This isn't a diet. It's a psychology program. But, um, yeah, that other one, it's, I don't know its name. It rhymes with flate flautchers. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Very good. Oh, and I think I said three-week program. It's a three-month program. But anyway. Check out Dr. Scott's website at simplyherbals.net. You can remember that because it's kind of like simplyherbals.net. And uh, check us out at drsteve.com. And if you want to purchase anything you hear us talk about on the show, go to stuff.drsteve.com. Not an advertisement, just getting you uh, where you need to be. Anyway, so uh, you still got anything on the per- the the weekly question? you have anything for sale at simplyherbals.net? We still have a, a few good things for sale. Nothing new yet. Oh, so you're shutting it down, but you're coming up with new things? <laughs> no. Then what's this business model? Uh, obviously terrible. <laughs> well, poor, I... old, poor old Daniel up in Canada <clears throat> said, well, I haven't sold that many flatus flutes lately. Maybe I'm, you know, I've got them priced too high. And it's like, no, maybe no. it's because you're selling flatus <laughs> flutes. Right. That's what the problem is. My problem is I, I do a really crappy job of maintaining my website and, yeah. and advertising. It's fun to get it started, and then after that, it's not it's so much tough. fun anymore. Wow. As people know, after 17 years of us doing this show, <laughs> we're just sort of phoning it in, which is sad. But um, try not to f- just phone it in. But. No. All right. So uh, on that topic, I've done zero prep today. I interviewed my replacement at work. And that was fun. I think she will be awesome. And I will be very happy to step back one year from uh, two days from now. So a year and two days. Jeez. I'll, yeah. bl- I'll believe it when I see it. Well, I'm I not, know how you are. I'm not going to quit working. No, I'm just going to become a grunt. I'm not going to be the man anymore. I will be the only man on our team, but, uh, you know, the only person who identifies as male with xy chromosome but it's uh, we will um have uh, a new boss because i'm the boss and i'm not gonna be the boss anymore so you know what that means no more effing meetings mm-hmm. no more uh, there's things i can't talk about sure because i would dox myself but yeah. um just you know no more and i, I think i'm going to step back from being uh editor-in-chief of the medical journal and I'm going to step back from just all kinds of stuff. I'm mm-hmm. just going to work. All I want to do is teach and see patients. That's yeah. all I want to do. I would like to transition and do a little more teaching, too. And just if you can get somebody to pay you to teach sticking needles in people. Yeah. Of course. Well, you know what? You know, I do it at the medical school. I teach the family medicine residents yeah. a lot. So. But they, do they pay you for that? Not yet. They don't. Okay, not yet. Not they. Yet. I've been. I've been on the faculty of three different medical schools, and they've all pay me a big fat zippo. Yeah, that's what I'm getting right now. And it looks good on the resume. Right. You know, you get to put assistant clinical professor of this, right. that, and the other. Uh, but I don't need a resume builder anymore. I'm, what am I building a resume for? Yeah, I'm about the same. I'm, I'm about to phase that out a little bit. Um, well, you're still young. Yeah, but hell, I hang around you, so I, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> how old are you? Anyway? Fifty three. You're my you're my best friend. I don't yeah. know how old you 53. are. Fifty three. Fifty three. Okay, and a good fifty three too. And until I looked in that camera, and I think the lighting must be bad here. We both well, have gray I hair. I huh? can't fix it. The no. stupid <laughs> iPad is what controls the lights, and it it keeps saying it doesn't have battery. But I've got it plugged in. Shit, make sure that's plugged in down there. It is, yep. I don't know if it's charging. But I don't know if it's turned on, yep. This is compelling radio, by the way. Well, that's a, that iPad's older. And, it is, but, but it still it's works. got our damn sound card on it. I mean, soundboard on it. Yep. It's got our stuff. Anyway, all right. Well, um, yeah, so no Ron Bennington announcing that we need to do this, that, or the other. So what do you got? Well, I've got it. We've got a couple people in the chat right now. Okay. Which well, is kind of cool. And didgeridoos are where the money is at. That is true. Selling didgeridoos? <laughs> that is yes. the most... Okay, if I have mad respect, and no one tunes in to hear me talk about friggin' didgeridoos, <laughs> but I have mad respect for anybody 
that can play that goddamn instrument. Oh yeah, the circle breathing. I bought breathing. one when I was in uh, uh, when I was in Australia and had it shipped home. Yep. Hell, I gave it to somebody. <laughs> I couldn't get it to make a damn sound. It just sounded like. <sighs> it's a circle <sighs> breathing thing. You got to be able to do. And I, I do have we. You and I have a common friend that can play one. Really? Yeah, Reed. Get out of here. Well, of course he can. Of course he can. He's old hip. <laughs> but I saw somebody on YouTube doing circular breathing, and people don't know what we're talking about. It's where you're exhaling and inhaling at the same time, and it sounds impossible, which if that were what was going on, it is. But what they're doing is they're storing um, they're storing pressurized air in their, um, in their mouth. Right. And then they're expelling it while they're inhaling through their nose right and then they recharge the the you know the pressurized cabin which is their mouth it's very much almost kind of like a uh, uh and I, i've seen people play bagpipe like a, this, a philip glass quartet he had these the i'll play some of it for you mm. where they're just going and it goes on for wow. you know 20 minutes wow. and there's no place to take a breath but they're they're all had to be proficient in circular breathing Jeez. you couldn't be in his uh ensemble well that that's pretty cool that is <laughs> pretty cool. cool let me see if i can find some well, of that. Well, you, you start go to, ahead yeah, yeah i'll start topic while you're looking it up because i think um just to keep people semi semi engaged um hey so yeah, I don't want to get a, uh, a copyright ding either, but <laughs> no, I no, think no. if we play just two seconds of this, yeah, I think it'll be good. Yeah, the um, no, but in the in the, in the category of no shit, um, but um, it's about time we we got some good solid research. Um, I, re- I was reading a thing today. It's called the Dash Diet. D A S H. Oh yeah, sure. Diet, okay, and um, it stands for the uh, dietary approaches to stop hypertension. Ugh. Yeah, so we've always... This we've, is going to be fascinating. Yeah. Last week we did, you know... <laughs> it's pain, the best I can do in 30 seconds. Painful penile um, parables, and now we're going to do the dash diet. <laughs> well, I, I, I look, fasten I look for your seatbelts, yeah. everybody. I look for people sticking things in their, in their penises and up their rectums. Oh, but God, that's I, all I I just I wasn't find. having anything good this week. Yeah, so the dash diet is <laughs> promoted by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. Yes. To prevent and control hypertension. Go ahead. Do do your story, and then I'll Wax comment on it. Poetic on it. Well, the bottom line is what we stuff we talk about all the time. Keep your blood pressure down by staying active, uh, monitoring your type two diabetes, mm. and uh, uh, the, uh, things that we've talked about for fifteen plus years. Um, but the dash that bottom line is it works by not making drastic changes, but eating more of kind of a med- Mediterranean type diet, yeah. increasing vegetables, increasing fruits at every meal, and reducing your consumption of of meats. Um, nope. <laughs> down to to make them not the star of the show, but a, as a as a may have me as, as a, a condiment or, as a condiment. Ugh. But here's a big thing that which I feel like was kind of. Um, the take home for me the bottom line is when they get down to the bottom they talk about the exercise component and how important it was for them to have a nope well but, but how important it is for them to have, to have, the, have a uh, i'm the worst doctor a, 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 a um a structure a structure <laughs> eat less mate nope yep. eat, exercise eat, nope drink more smoke more do as i say not as i do that's, that's the, right that's the thing yeah i mean hellfire if you can't drink a little bit and smoke a little bit and eat a little bit of meat what good is it? Well, you know, that, that this is true, and I know people are sick of hearing me say it, but my mantra has always been everything in moderation, including everything in moderation. In other words, every once in a while you got to blow it out your ass. But anyway, go mm-hmm. ahead. I'm being horrible. No, that's about now, now that you've ruined my, my exciting topic. Well, it's terrible. <laughs> hey, well, well, the got- DASH diet is rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy foods. So listen, yep. um, we are what we eat. Yes. If you want to be a big f- tub of lard, mm-hmm. uh, eat pizza and um, and cheeseburgers and all that stuff every day, mm-hmm. day in and day out. Drink beer, yeah, mm-hmm. and then you'll you'll be a big fatso, mm-hmm. and and that's okay too. Uh, if, that's, well, if that's what you want to be, I or guess. If, if that's I'm, where you're comfortable, you know, anyway. I, I don't know. It's I mean, if you want to be healthy, and we define healthy as the you know an absence of disease and increased life expectancy mm. then you do want to eat better than that right yeah and um but that's a choice that we all have to make 
And all of, many of these maladies can be controlled by diet. Type yeah. 2 diabetes can be. Hypertension can be. You just got to want to do it. And the problem is, it's just so easy to take a low sartan, mm-hmm. and then you got your blood pressure down, and then you take a rosuvastatin, and then you, your cholesterol's down. So, hell, I can just eat whatever the hell I want to. Mm-hmm. You know, people in Norway uh, have less heart attacks because they eat lots of fish. So let's just take a bunch of fish, put it in a vat, and then render them down to a pill, and then we'll take a pill. <laughs> There's got to be an easier way than exercise, does, does there? <laughs> Who wants to exercise? I have people, I have patients all the time say, "Do you exercise?" I'm like, "Hell no! How do you think I make all my money?" <laughs> it's like all, all you true. crazy people out there doing those cowbell things and those. those oh yeah, um, they're all your clients. Those, yeah, those, I, yeah, 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 those yeah, yeah. P90X things. I paid more. The only pay, there's only one person that's made more money on P90X than me, and that's this the P90. guy. That's the dude, that Mr. P90. No, that, that dude, Jeff. P, P, I think that's his name. Is it P90? Yeah. P90. (laughs) I did P90, and I, you know, we still recommend P90 for people who are on the road, you know, over the road truck drivers, particularly, who will tell me, "I, I can't exercise. You can with that because you don't have to carry around a bunch of weights. It's all, uh, resistance bands, and you have a, a um you know a dvd player in your cabin so you could do p90 and it's only 15 20 minutes a day mm-hmm. so that's it's doable very it's better than nothing which is unfortunately what i'm doing these days yeah some of it's my back but some of it's just plain laziness now i'm very active nobody can keep up with me when my back mm-hmm. isn't effing me up at work there's no one can no. keep up with me yep so and I, i'm not bragging i'm just walk fast it drives tacy crazy you know, my legs are just slow down. It's like I'm going my normal speed. But anyway, that's whatever. <laughs> she's lovely. Matter of fact, she's so lovely that our listeners have sort of demanded that she come back. So this is kind of what I thought we might do. And let me know what, what you all think about this. But I thought what we could do is do a Patreon. It'd be very inexpensive. I'm not... Carl from WATP who can charge, you know, 10, 25 bucks a month. I mean, we won't do that. But we would do, um, or Vinny from the Creep Off who charges, you know, $10. Um, I would uh, do, it ra- instead do something, you know, between 3 and $5 a month, but it would just be Tacy. I think I'll just call it Weird Tacy. And she and I'll do a show like three times a month. We'd still have this show. Mm hmm. Uh, we'd do Sirius XM, the regular podcast, but then we'd have the Patreon show that's just tasty stuff. And then she can yell at me, and people like that. Yes. You know, especially if she's yes. drinking. Yes. And then she yells at me. People love that. I know. It. So apparently I need to be yelled at more. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so the Dash Diet. That was fascinating. What fascinating. else Fascinating. Well... Another good topic. Oh, let me I mindfulness. I, let me I'll, see if if it'll let me play this. Oh, and I just wanted to play like two. I'll play two seconds of it. Okay, that goes on for six minutes. Jeez. Okay, there's no one taking. That's that's not synthesizers. That's not sampled. No one is taking a breath. You know, not, no one's stopping playing to take a breath. Right on, yeah. They have to continue to play. That is uh, Philip Glass Glassworks, if you want to listen to it and just hear an example of a whole ensemble that's doing circular breathing. And the uh, song is called Flow, F-L-O-E, or the piece is called Flow. I guess they're not songs. That's pretty cool. But anyway, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I think I played an, a little enough of that that we won't get a copyright strike. All right, what else you got? So a little bit of talk about... Uh, mindfulness. Okay. And what I was reading was that... Mindfulness. Um, yeah, mindfulness. Something that's a little bit more in our... In our See, I um, figured we last happiness. week we did penises. Well, I thought maybe this time we would do vaginas. Well... You couldn't find no, any gross no vagina gross stories? vagina stories. Either. Nothing. On the whole internet. Okay. Nothing. Hey, I even looked... I even looked... Um, and some news outlets overseas and couldn't find anything good. So. <laughs> but I, I did try. I really did. Right. I think it's the first time I've done that much show prep and uh, about 15 years. But um, anyway, so CNN was talking about uh, this whole concept that they have. Um, and it's a Dutch concept, but it's called Nixon, N-I-K-S-E-N. Um, 
embracing the Dutch art of doing nothing and the importance mm -hmm. of, of that resetting your all of us who get pretty stressed out and but you know the bottom line is it's not it doesn't mean nothing it means giving your your brain a chance to rest instead of having it they were relating it to to um, an exercise and, and how when you exercise your body lift weights you need a day off you know yeah. you don't want to do bicep right. curls every single day and they were they were saying kind of the brain needs a little bit of the same thing even though absolutely yeah because at night of course what does nixon have to do with this no that's no it's it, that's the uh, dutch term i that's am the, not oh okay that's the, <laughs> you are not a crook no but that's the dutch term for this so i thought that was kind of cool well i and i agree with that i'll yeah. tell you what i was talking to one of my concierge clients today and what what this person said was that when they lay down at night, they just have music in their head, and they can't get rid of it, and they have these thoughts, and they can't get rid of those. And I can identify with that. I have um, a shower speaker. You know, I, it's waterproof that I can listen to podcasts in the shower because I have to be constantly entertained, apparently. <laughs> and um, Yes, you do. I, <laughs> it's called ADHD. But... <laughs> yeah, that probably. Yeah, that's it. You're right. Yeah. So, um, but it, it has three notes. And the three notes are the three first notes in um, Black Magic Woman. Okay. But also the same three notes of uh, uh, Get Get Smart sa soundtrack okay. or a theme song. Hmm. So when I play it, it goes do, do, do. And then so I can either hear do, 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 Carlos Santana, sure. or I can hear do 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 all day long <laughs> in my head. And I can't get it out of there. Sometimes I get songs in my head that I hate. Yep. I hate the song and I can't get it out of my head. Mm -hmm. That drives me batshit. Yeah. So I tried the Trip app, mm -hmm. T R I P P. It's uh, for Oculus, mm -hmm. and uh, if you do it, it'll knock that out of your head. Okay. It's, a, it's a form of meditation that for people who don't want to, quote, unquote, meditate, you know, because it's, it's like a game, but it's not. Right. You're in an alien environment, and you do these breathing exercises with this light, and when you breathe out, you can see red sparks, and when you breathe in, you can see blue sparks, mm -hmm. and you... Um, then ascend to the next level and it's the coolest damn thing and the last level is you're over the world mm -hmm. and they're saying look there's no boundaries or you know it's all kind of you know new agey stuff right. but when you're in the middle of that that's it's awesome mm -hmm. and uh, that gets that crap out of my head well you know i, I do a similar thing and but uh, i do it that cold water therapy and it's about time to start that again now, my, tell me about that my pool <clears throat> Like in the middle of the, uh, you know, like when when the is pool, your instrument okay? Yeah, it's good. I just okay. Sorry about that. I kind of no, I, I don't just, care about. It. I just um, I, no, I, I don't want to break it. I don't want anything bad to happen to it. Um, I don't think it, the the way I play, I don't think you would notice. But um, <laughs> <laughs> do you have the robot by the way? Yeah, you do. Sure. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yep. the uh, what I, what I what I do is is when the when the uh, pool water gets cold. I'll do my medit. I'll go out there. I mean, it may be thirty degrees outside. Yep. And I'll d I'll do my meditation, meditational breathing. Get a big deep breath in. Get a big deep breath out. And I walk down into the pool and sit in it. Are you out of your mind? Room. No, I'll sit in there for at least eight minutes. Is your pool not filthy this time of year? No, no, no. I I I, I kind of work on it all year round. I just okay. turn off, I just turn off the pump and winterize it, but I'll, but I'll leave it full of water so I can get in and do my my deep thinking. Yeah, that's Beck's job now, and he, that's that's interesting. So, yeah. how late do you keep your pool open? I I got in it every month of the year last year, except for uh, except for February. Really? Yep. So you just leave it open? You don't put a cover on it? I put a cover on. I just peel the corner back. Yeah. Just peel the corner back, and then just walk in and have a seat and start breathing. Cold water therapy. I don't know. It's insane. It, but but now I have to I have to admit now eight minutes in there, then I walk down to my hot tub and get in there for one. Yeah, minute. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then walk back up and get back in the cold again. Yeah. For about another five to eight minutes. There was a Japanese spa. And we're just going far afield. But yes. There was a Japanese spa in Asheville called Shoji. I remember. That. Yeah, I never went to that. They're still there. They're yeah. still there. And they had a thing where you would um, do do the same thing, mm -hmm. except it didn't have leaves and shit in it. Didn't have to, <laughs> but they had a, a cold pool. Oh, yeah. And you'd get in the hot tub. And when you get in a hot tub, the capillaries in your skin open up. Mm. Right? Right. 
to radiate out all that extra heat. Mm. And um, so, it, you know, you're kind of increasing your core temperature or attempting to in the hot tub. And then so you'll open up all these capillaries and small vessels. So you're increasing the volume of your of of your um, circulatory system. Right. So when we increase the volume <clears throat> but leave the amount of fluid in there the same, what happens to the pressure? Everything goes down. It drops. Exactly. exactly. And if this stupid, I guess I'm going to have to get a new iPad. This one, oh, I think boogers. it's done. Um, I would give you a bell. I give myself a bell. Thank you. Um, but it, uh, so yeah, and then when you jump in the cold pool, it does just the opposite. Right. So there are those people who say, well, what you're doing is you're exercising your circulatory system. Mm-hmm. I tend to say you're courting a stroke, but yes. <laughs> but I used to love to do that back when I used to work out every day and mm-hmm. I was pumping iron and I was all buff. I was pretty buff back in your streaker days. But, yeah, yeah, fourth year of medical school. <laughs> I would I would do that. I would go from the cold pool to the hot pool, back and forth and back and forth because I loved the way it made me feel. I mean, it was invigorating. So well, that's good for you. Well. So you said you couldn't find anything uh, on. Uh, you know, vaginas. Yeah. We did a whole thing about penises last time. It's just only fair. So here's one. Ten reasons your ugly vagina is normal and gorgeous. Ooh. Yeah. And then they have a picture of a tree branch, you know, like the knee, uh, the elbow of a tree, and it looks like a horrific looking, just scabbed over. You can't see it. Can you see it? No, I was looking okay. to see it. at the front look, door. It's not, yeah. It doesn't look good. Um, anyway, um, so, yes, plenty of guys out there use terms like roast beef or kebab. You know why they use roast beef, a ro- an exploded roast beef sandwich? Because they heard it on Opie and Anthony. That's where they got it from. And so they think it's funny, and uh, they don't really think that, but they like it is. They think it's funny. <laughs> so, um, and by the way, when you're looking at that, that's not the person's vagina, it's their vulva, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you, hopefully you can't see the vagina from the outside. No. Um, so, let's see. Uh, that's about it. Okay, there's no such thing as abnormal. Even CD, CD quack operations like the Vagina Institute, I don't know who they are. These people are saying CD and quack, not me. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe do some uh, some labiaplasty, which is when if a woman is not happy with her labia, they can actually do surgery on it. Women don't do that. If you're with a guy that doesn't like the way your labia look, you get a different guy. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, because that, that, that's a surgery that's not very comfortable. Yeah, I, you can have surgery on it. I agree with them. They say you shouldn't even consider doing this. Now, the people who do it out there are probably yelling at their at their radio right now, but um, you know, there's lots of nerve endings in there, so you will lose those. And again, if a guy doesn't like something interesting down there, he know, ain't looking hard what enough. Are they, yeah, what are they? He's not looking, looking hard for? enough. So, uh, so anyway, and beauty standards are completely arbitrary. I agree with that. So, mm-hmm. and don't look it up on the internet; you'll drive yourself crazy. <laughs> so it's normal. <laughs> Whatever you got down there, it's normal. And there are lots of guys who would be totally happy to be with you and you know when do you go down there and just start poking around looking at stuff anyway <laughs> do you do that no hell no i don't either oh well, there's that, i mean if there's I'm a down purpose there, if you're, you're down there for one purpose and that's yeah, not if there. i'm down there doing stuff i got my eyes closed or my eyes are above so i can't see anything yeah. you know they're looking yeah i'm not down there up, evaluating right <laughs> exactly i've got a purpose without being gross but you know i'm just i'm just saying yeah so these people say girly-looking vulvas are for little girls. They're right. Now, some guys like that, uh, you know, there you go. Hmm. To each their own. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good and then a bang in the night and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go South. I own a home and I can tell you, I know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. 
it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I The family that vacations together stays together. At least that was the plan. Except now the dastardly desk clerk is saying he can't confirm your connecting rooms. Uh, wait, what? That's right, ma'am. You have rooms 201 and 709. No, we cannot be five floors away from our kids. Eh, the doors have double locks. They'll be fine. When you want your connecting rooms confirmed before you arrive, it matters where you stay. Welcome to Hilton. I see your connecting rooms are already confirmed. Hilton, for the stay. This episode is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash SBO. Terms and conditions apply. So what else you got? Oh, well, you know, the reason I, I brought that topic up because okay. it, it was it was discussing the the of of all the horrible things that have come of COVID-19. Ah, a, yes. a couple of the good things. There is, I can list a bunch of good things. Yeah, and I, I think let's talk about that for a minute okay. because it's one yeah. thing we just haven't. Yep, I'm with I you. I mean, for, a, a, for the last 19, 20 months, it's nothing but the, the horrors. Yeah, and, um, the horrors. Oh, well, that is the, the good horrors thing. of COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know. No, I bet their business went down, too. Yeah. Well, and we don't call them that. No, gosh, no. That, that'd be disrespectful. Professional women. Yes. The oldest profession in the world. That's right. But it, it, I'm as... Oh, here I'm going to get in trouble. Here again. we go. As a libertarian, I think it should be completely <laughs> legal, but it should be, you know, in the women should be protected, not exploited. Right. Agreed. No, I'm Come not okay 100%. with exploitation. No. Now, some people will say any sex work is exploitation. There's a lot of sex workers would disagree with that. Yeah. Yep. But, you know, there's. I, I can see both sides of this. I know that one that stupid? makes a ton of money down in Miami and yeah. loves her life. Yeah. And does. Good. Good for her. And I mean, yeah, does it because she likes it. Yeah. It makes a freaking mint. Well, she ought to because I'm sure all, some of the guys she has to deal with are just creeps, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'd, be, that'd be terrible. <laughs> um, anyway. But, you, you know, no uh, good things. Uh, obviously, people learning how to do new breathing techniques. A lot of the extra home exercising went up. It's, it's okay. Pretty, yeah, home exercise equipment sales went up, and people streaming apps as okay. far as exercise things have gone up. And um, I, I, I think was thinking those, uh, people practicing their instruments. And yeah, and that's the the other thing is to every everyone that I've seen play live recently. In fact, we went to the Merle Festival, which is a, a music festival out in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Yeah, um, every one of those guys who I didn't think could get better. They were all they were all better. It was it was wonderful. A, they had nothing to do but practice for uh, for and and actually one of the guys uh, and he's actually uh, <laughs> the uh, lead singer and guitar player for the, a band called the Kruger Brothers, which is the best. Oh I, yeah, I know yeah, that. Oh my god, you and wonderful. I played some of their songs. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they're wonderful guys. But even even um, Uwe said that that he feels like he's better now than he's ever been because he said, heck, for the last year and a half, we've just sit around and pick all day, and that's all we do is just play. Yeah. So, um, so there at least you know there's there's a is a there's a silver lining. Well, I said I was going to do yeah. all those things. What did you get better in? Nothing. The COVID year? I don't I don't think so. Ham radio. Yeah, that's true. You got that's better ham it. radio. You built a lot of <laughs> gadgets. Yeah, I built it. Oh, I did build a bunch of shit. But, oh, God. But that's just stupid. That's, I had all these ideas. Oh, my gosh. So, um, but, uh, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a goddamn idiot. <laughs> So, um, good things from, yeah. uh, yeah. One of the other things that came out of this was, 
uh, you the mRNA technology. I know there are people out there that think it's the devil, but mRNA te- technology is one of those things right. that may bring us a, a treatments for cancer that we never had before. Because we've been talking about this for ages on this show, from day one. Mm-hmm. Well, not d- exactly day one. That show was all dicks and nuts. But since then, we've been talking about non pseudoscience cancer cures. And one of the ways to cure cancer is to teach the body to kill it its damn self, because that was what it was supposed to do in the first place. If the body was doing its job, the cancer wouldn't have happened, because this is a failure of the immune system to recognize that tissue as being abnormal. Right. And uh, using mRNA vaccines, uh, it is possible to teach the immune system which proteins to look for and then have it just go kill the cancer. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, that sounds like science fiction. Well, we we have seen it. Mm -hmm. We have seen actual cures like this. Yep. Uh, There's the abscopal effect. Abscopal effect happens when you have someone, say, with melanoma of the bone, and this is metastasized, so it's stage four, and you you uh, radiate the that bone because mm-hmm. the person's having pain, and then they come back a month later and all their cancer's gone. It's gone. They're cured. And the immune system, when you irradiated that bone, you opened up those cells to be exposed to the immune system. Mm-hmm. And in those people where that works, it they found a protein, those T cells found a protein that they could transmit uh, to the other cells that says, this is what we're looking for. Wow. And then they just go and they go everywhere. And it's perfect. It's cell by cell, molecule by molecule, a perfect cure. Wow. That's incredible. So it, this can be done. Yeah. Now, if we can, it always happens by accident. Mm-hmm. We don't know how to enhance it to increase the probability that it'll happen. Mm -hmm. But we know it happens. And what that means is we just have to put our heads to it and figure out what factors cause it to happen. What's different about those people than the normal person that you irradiate and they're still, you know, stage four and all that stuff. And once you figure that out, then you can start to reproduce it in other people. So that'll get that cancer underway. And then you know, and there's other technologies where they're taking T cells out of the patient's blood, exposing them to tumor proteins that they have now opened up by denaturing them somehow, mm-hmm. and then injecting those T cells back in. And uh, they just go and hunt out the, and then they teach the rest of the system and they divide and they multiply. And then the next thing you know, the cancer's gone. Wow. So then. You don't want them looking around going, oh, so now what do I do now? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the is, problem. Is because these are human, living human cells living inside a living human person. Mm. You have to be very careful that when you train them against some protein in the body that it isn't also in the heart or the brain or something right. like that. Right. So it's attacking the wrong thing. That's like so, an well, autoimmune disease. Well, it's kind of yeah. like the Opie and Anthony um, uh, army. You know, the pests, Mm -hmm. they developed when they did Jocktober, this group of fans that would when they decided when they trained the eye of Sauron on, say, free beer and hot wings show and they would go shut down their Facebook page. They'd have phase one when they'd shut off comments and then phase two when they shut the whole page down Mm. and they would come after them. Well, after Opie and Anthony, when they're not on the air anymore, what are all those guys going to do? That's fun. Mm -hmm. It's still fun. So they just turned on Opie and Anthony. (laughs) You know, and it's like you should be proud of that, that you created this monster. Oh, my God. And uh, and now they're, you know, on WATP, but... Wow. Um, or who are these podcasts heard wherever you hear podcasts. So, hmm. But that that's, you know, that's kind of where some of the pests went. And this is sort of the same thing is you got to be careful that when you train these T cells to fight something, that when the fight is over, that they just go away mm-hmm. and they don't attack the people that created them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that's a weird analogy, but I think it's apropos. It is apropos. All right. You got anything else? No, not right now. 
Okay. All right. Well, so what we're going to do now, because I had to work all week like uh, any other normal person, and I didn't have time to do show prep, let's just take some random phone calls off of our phone call bank. It's 347-766-4323, and you can call any time you would like. And uh, let's see what we got here. Um, okay. Technical. De- God. Okay. Here we go. Hey, Dr. Steve. Um, before I ask my question, I just wanted to say uh, thanks so much for being, you know, such an informed voice for um, trying to figure out what's going on during the pandemic. Well, I thank you, my friend. Very difficult for me to figure out, you know, who's got an agenda, who's just straight up lying and yeah. um, or, or, or misinforming but not intending to. There's just so much going on that I feel like you've been one of the few sources that I know, okay, this is going to be the honest straight shot. So hey, thank thanks, you for man. that. Uh, my question to. is about asymptomatic cases of COVID and whether or not they are drivers in the pandemic and if we have any evidence for that. Um, you know, at the beginning of this, uh, the fear of asymptomatics was really such that it, it was the reasoning behind lockdowns, yep. right? The idea right. is you can't go out of your house because you may have it and you don't even know. Um, and they really were banking on that being one of the significant drivers for the pandemic is, is this asymptomatic spread. But I didn't know if there was any, now that we're, you know, 18 plus months yeah. in, is there any actual evidence for that? Um, because if there's no evidence for that, then I'm really wondering why we're seeing some of these very strict and stringent, um, you know, approaches to controlling uh, COVID or attempting to control COVID. Yeah. So one thing I want you to do, though, this will make everybody feel a little bit better, is by going to covid.stoutlabs.com, which is our friend Daniel Stout's website. Look at new cases and uh, go out to 300 days. Put on the simple moving average at 20 days. And what you will see is that this we peaked. And the crazy thing is, see, my, my innovation on that website was adding the Bollinger Bands. And what the Bollinger Bands are are an indication of the standard deviation of the data, which is like, okay, you know it's choppy. You can see what the standard deviation is. You can estimate that. But what you can't estimate are the signals that the the Bollinger Bands will give you when they're laid over the tracing. Mm -hmm. And so back, uh, it's been, I don't know, three, four weeks now. For the first time, the the data tracing did not go over the top Bollinger Band. Now, people, you just have to go there and go look at it okay. and convince yourself. Okay. And the, on that day, I said, we're going to see um, a peak in the next couple of weeks, and then we're going to see a decline. Now, that was assuming that this surge has a symmetrical okay. or, or semi-symmetrical shape like all the other ones did. And lo and behold, that that initial signal was correct, even though the um, the the rate, or I'm sorry, the the new cases continued to increase. Mm-hmm. If you looked at the smoothing the smooth moving average, so just looking at that, you wouldn't be able to tell. But when you look at that signal on the Bollinger Bands, you could tell. So anyway, so the good news is is that it looks like not only have we had a peak, but we're past the peak and we're on the decline now. So uh, if this tracing is symmetrical, I'm just going to throw this out. Um, uh, if it is symmetrical, then we should get back down to like zero cases around December 15th. Okay, cool. Now, there's a lot of things that could mess that up, but that's what I'm looking at. So we'll see. Now, we've been on this show been pretty good at predicting these things. Mm-hmm. That was terrible at predicting when favipiravir was going to come out. It just right. totally blew that one. Mm. And uh, But I think that was from pressures that had nothing to do with with con- oh. with reality in some way. Yeah. Very, very irritated about ne- just now they're figuring out, oh, if we give remdesivir, there's a study uh, Gilead just put out this week, that if we give remdesivir at the beginning of the illness, right mm-hmm. when they're first diagnosed, they don't go to the hospital. Right. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're pretty smart. You know, 18 months later, mm-hmm. we're trying that. Yeah. And they've been concentrating on all these people that are, I get it, that are critically ill. Mm-hmm. But at that point, it's very difficult to turn it around. Right. When what we need to be doing is the whole reason, and I'm getting to his point, the whole reason we're doing lockdowns when we do them is to keep 
people out of the hospital right. because we came this close this time to having to say, hey, um, you have a 80-year-old grandmother who's got all these different comorbidities and mm-hmm. stuff, and we're going to have to take her off the vent to put a 50-year-old mm-hmm. on there. Mm-hmm. And if it's a 50-year-old unvaccinated person, there's people are going to be mad, yep. and there's going to be, you know, we've never, there's a principle in ethics called distributive justice, and we have never paid attention to that in this country ever. And what distributive justice says is that you distribute resources, limited resources to the people for whom it will do the most good. Okay. Well, we don't do that. All right. No. If, if you're... 112 years old, yeah. which I'm approaching, <laughs> and uh, you've had a stroke and you're on the ventilator and you want to just be on life support the rest of your life in a coma, uh, we'll do that. Yeah. You know? And uh, some people will grumble about it, but we'll do it mm-hmm. because we don't ever worry about dis- you know distribution of resources because we think we have unlimited resources. Yeah. So if you don't want shit like that to happen, we want to keep people out of the hospital. Well, the best way to do that is uh, having, uh, yes, vaccines have a role. They're mm-hmm. not the panacea. They're not the end of this. Mm-hmm. But a therapeutic that keeps people out of the hospital. Right. So don't wait till they get sick and then try your stupid drug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give it to them in the beginning. And then lo and behold, because we've seen in the hospital that remdesivir, it's it's okay. Right. It's not what we were hoping it would be where it's we're just perfect. turning people yeah. around. But when you give it to them, you know, day one or day two, now all of a sudden, hmm. you know, 60% of them are, you know, 60% decline. And I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's a big number, uh, aren't going to the hospital. That's a big number. Though. So when we have a pill, now that's an infusion and the monoclonal antibodies, same way, hmm. but, you know, reduces hospitalization oh, significantly. Yep. Uh, but that's an infusion. Mm-hmm. Can be given in four injections in the abdomen. So you can do it quickly, and right. it doesn't hurt, by the way. That's how I had it. But um, what we need, we're just got to have that pill. Yeah. And if this molnupiravir, this is what I'm I'm banking on, is molnupiravir, it will be the pill that will allow us to just go back to normal, because that's when we go back to normal, mm-hmm. when we have a therapeutic. That's why everybody, listen, the drive for hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, all those things, those were drives by people who wanted things to go back to normal, who knew therapeutics were the key. Yes. But it just, you know, the data didn't, work, didn't work pan out. out. Right, right. But but the the intent was correct. Yeah. Absolutely correct. Yeah, just trying to help. And, Come and, up with a solution. And, right. And anybody that, uh, and I've said this before, too, anyone that... Um, you know, was rooting against those drugs being effective because they didn't like whoever was promoting them. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you don't like Joe Rogan and he just said, hey, my doctor prescribed ivermectin. And it's, oh, you know, if you're rooting against that, yeah. you really are kind of part of the problem. Yeah. Because wouldn't it be nice if there was just a drug that was already on the shelf that we could have just yeah, taken geez. and this thing would have been over? Yeah. But it didn't work out that way. No. So, um, but I'm really hoping for molnupiravir. But we now have... Monoclonal antibodies keep you out of the hospital. If you have uh, early COVID and let's say you just got your PCR, you're sick, you got a temp of 102.5, you know, and your PCR test is positive, and you're over 65, or you're a kid with a immu- you know, compromised immune system, or you have diabetes mellitus, or you're, uh, you're overweight, Mm-hmm. you know, obese, mm-hmm. um, or you're on immunosuppressive drugs for whatever reason, you can go get that. And m- most of the time, this will keep you out of the hospital. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what's going to happen with the remdesivir thing. I think it's a little bit late, but uh, at least they're looking at it. At least finally they're looking at throwing these things at people early on. Mm-hmm. So, Why we couldn't do that in the beginning? We were so focused on vaccines and critically ill people that we didn't focus to to my liking, mm-hmm. you know, as much as I would have liked to have seen on early therapeutics. Right. So, yeah. Anyway. Oh, so uh, is uh, so here's the deal with asymptomatic transmission. <clears throat> we know that it's possible. Mm. The reason that it's an issue is because if you are sick like I was, I don't think I transmitted it to anybody mm-hmm. because I immediately 
uh, isolated myself in my room. The only time I went out was to go get um, the infusion, mm-hmm. and they brought me up the back way. It was all safe. They were all PPE'd up. I was PPE'd up. Uh, you know, and then my family didn't get it. Nobody got it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, because I knew I had it. If you don't know you have it, yeah. you're going to come into contact with more people. And so it kind of evens out a little bit mm-hmm. that um, I've infected nobody. Let's say someone with asymptomatic transmission, they stick their finger in their nose and, or, and they shake somebody's hand or whatever, yep. or they cough into their hand because we all cough. Sure. And then uh, they shake somebody's hand or they, you know, somehow it gets on somebody and uh, they get it. So now maybe they infected two people. Well, I had it. Uh, a sim- I had a symptomatic case and infected no one that mm-hmm. I know of. But an asymptomatic person could easily infect one or two people. Yep. And that's why they're worried about it. But listen, lockdowns aren't for, tran- you know, preventing transmission of disease really they are for preventing the the medical system from being overwhelmed yeah. and we don't want people to die no. we have more people die from this now at least had the diagnosis on their death certificate that's something we could talk about than uh the influenza pandemic but we got way more people in this country now too so if you look at it as a percentage of the population it's still extremely low mm. all right yep all right so, very interesting question. Yep, good question. Not bad for a random question. Uh, okay, this looks like uh, Tracy from Louisiana. Let me see. Um, here we go. Tracy from Louisiana, everybody. Hey, Dr. Steve. It's your old buddy. Got a question for you. Is there any biohazard to all these disgusting face masks that people <laughs> are leaving laying around after they sneeze and snotted at them? What's my chances of catching COVID because the mask is blown across a parking lot and I tried to pick it up or whatever? Well, don't pick it up. That's not your job. So, no, but it, it, good for you for trying to be a good citizen. Uh, most of the time, <laughs> <laughs> which is ironic for yes. anyone who's listened uh-huh. to the show for, mm-hmm. for the last six months. But I felt like we were being set up. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, this this virus is not really fomite transmitted but if you've got someone who had covid-19 so you got to look at the population what are the odds that the person who snotted into this thing that you just touched mm-hmm. had covid-19 so we would have to go to covid.stoutlabs.com and see what the um what the um incidence no the, I'm sorry the prevalence of this virus in the community right now and uh, let's say it is a half of 1%. Let's just say it's 1%. So that means if you pick up 100 face masks, 99 of them won't have that virus. Right. So that's the first thing. Now, so it's 1%. Now, what are the odds that you'll get it from that? <laughs> if you wash your hands and you don't put the mask on your stupid face mm-hmm. and uh, you pick it up by the string and you drop it in the thing and then you sanitize your hands afterward, let's say that's one in a thousand. Mm-hmm. So now you're talking about one one thousandth of one percent mm-hmm. chance that you would get it from that. He sounded like a pretty cheap bastard. He probably goes around and I don't know. He sounds like the kind of person that might, you know, just throws hundreds around here and there. <laughs> just, you know. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, the, the truth is, if you <clears throat> if you just wash your hands and practice good hygiene, the odds are, yep. you're not gonna even if Get you're it doing from that. even if you're doing your good deed for the day, which is picking up trash, yep, in somebody's parking lot, which is wonderful. Thank you, thank you we, for we your service. That. Yeah, we appreciate your service. <laughs> but um, yeah, wash your damn hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And if it's a stupid iPad was working, uh, we're just gonna have to get a new one. And oh um, man, I'm so, gonna, have, have we lost all the? I wonder if we lost all the. Yes, oh, we lost. Dang everything. it! It's okay. I I can recreate them. Okay. Uh, I think. Um, but yeah, it, it, so people, I some of my concierge patients will call me. So I had sex with somebody. What's the chance I have AIDS Mm -hmm. or HIV? And then we just go through the same thing. Well, what's the prevalence in the population? Mm -hmm. If if you were with somebody that had it, what's the odds you're going to get it through penile vaginal sex? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you multiply those things together, and the the number is so low, it's usually very reassuring. Okay? Yep. All right. 
Okie doke. Here we go. Um, okay, hello. This one says, I can see that this is not a COVID question, but I don't know what it is. Uh oh. I also think I just got hit with that crap. The whole family. It's yes. not fun. Sorry, man. All vaccinated. What? Never mind. Doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> hey, I got a question. It's not about goddamn COVID. Uh, so I'm about 40, so everything's falling apart, uh, and my life is getting worse by the day. But, um, you know, a year ago or so, <laughs> sorry, I um, I woke up with a start in the bed, and uh, I I felt like I was gonna piss myself. Mm. So I jumped up and I ran to the bathroom, uh, scurried, if you will, and uh, I peed in the toilet, yeah. and that was lucky. Okay. But there was a little bit of blood, you know, a little bit of blood in the toilet goes a long uh, way, uh, and just sharp, horrendous pain. And so I gathered, I guess I passed a stone, okay. um, unless for some reason I got clogged up or something. I don't know, man. You're the doctor. You tell me. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Anyway, all my friends were like, ah, you're going to get a bunch more stones. Oh, this is the end of your life. Oh, what good uh, friends. Get ready for all of these shards of horror to come shooting out of your dick. Why are humans like that? We just delight in other people's misery. Mm -hmm. And then it never happened again. Good. It's been like over a year, and, you know, I uh, I still have this uh, overarching fear over my entire life uh, that this will happen again because it will. Yeah. So uh, the answer to that is my rule always is if blood comes out of an orifice it's not supposed to come out of, and that's every orifice, that you should get it looked at at least the first time. Yeah. Now, it's been a year, so does he have a polyp that's turning into something? I Hell, I don't know. Did he have a stone? There's no way to know. I would tell my primary care about that, and if they feel like sending you to a urologist just to make sure everything's okay, mm -hmm. Dr. Scott and I both have had that procedure. It sucked, mm -hmm. but um, ask know, for other procedures first. It was nice. <laughs> it was nice to to get confirmation that we didn't have <laughs> bladder cancer. So you yeah. know, all right. So yeah, I would get that checked out. All right. Let's see. I don't know what that is. Don't know. In case says, "Oh, cool. Thanks." Anyway, I did. I don't know what that is. Let's see. Hey, this is Senator Tim Scott from the. Okay, it's now we're getting those kind of calls. <laughs> Okay. Oh, God. I don't even know who that is. Okay, here, how about this one? Let's see. Hey, baby. Did you hear about this? Uh, these Dutch kids, and boys and girls or whatever, they've been putting uh, them the snooze pouches, you know, them tobacco mouth dips in their uh, foreskin and anal cavity. Okay, I have not heard about that. I have heard about other things like this. We talked about this is from last week. Okay. Uh, don't put things in your foreskin and in your anal cavity that are supposed to go in your mouth. And don't if, don't put tobacco pouches anywhere. No. I mean, if you ever looked at what it looks like when it comes out of your mouth, I mean, it looks like you're you're shitting out of your mouth. So uh, I would avoid that as well. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, please don't. Please don't do that. And then you don't. You're not being clever by coming up with some innovative way to to get nicotine into your body by you know putting a pouch in your foreskin. I mean, you're just inviting problems. And one of those is remember, nicotine is a vasoconstrictor. Mm -hmm. So now you take this pouch, you put it be, instead of twixt cheek and gum, you put it twixt glands and foreskin. And now you're constricting the blood vessels of the foreskin and the glands, and you're inviting disaster because there's one thing about the mouth is it's central. Mm -hmm. So it's got lots of blood supply. Mm -hmm. And For, it has a mucosal lining, too. That's so, true. Yeah, it's true. Which is a little different than those other locations. Yeah. And the foreskin uh, is at the periphery of the body. As a matter of fact, it's, it's a terminal location. In mm -hmm. other words, blood has to go down and then get to the tip of the foreskin, then turn around and come back. Yeah. So any of those places are sort of like, I don't know, that you know the rural parts of the body, that they don't get the services. That, Deadsville is what it is. Yeah. Deadsville. Okay, yeah, <laughs> man. Don't do you don't get the yeah. services like you do in the big city. No, you do not. And therefore, damage is harder to heal. Yep. 
and uh, that's an issue. So I would not do that. That's stupid. We had, you know, when we did the vodka tampon, one of the reasons we did that was because there were people who were um, <clears throat> taking tampons and soaking them in vodka and then inserting them in their orifices and trying to get high. And one of the things that we said was, if you put that in the vagina, it won't work. Mm. Right? Yep. Why? Because the vagina is not made to absorb things. The vagina is made to um, not absorb right, things. Right, block things. Yeah, well, yeah. it's made to transmit semen. Yeah. Into one place. Into one place <laughs> and not absorb anything. Right. So it's just crazy. It is nuts. So, um, uh, and then people were taking vodka and putting it under their eyelid. And yes, you can do that. You'll get a, a chemical conjunctivitis from that. Mm -hmm. You could get some permanent corneal damage. And you're not going to get very drunk because you're talking about a... Um, you're talking about a thumb... Th you know, a thimbleful. Mm -hmm. No. So cut the shit. Yeah, don't be stupid, man. All right. All right. All right, good deal. Well, listen, uh, thanks... To Dr. Scott, don't we can't forget Rob Sprantz, Bob Kelly, Greg Hughes, Anthony Cumia, Jim Norton, Travis Teff, that Gould girl, Lewis Johnson, Paul F. Charsky, Chowdy 1008, Eric Nagel, the Port Charlotte whore, the Saratoga Skank, Roland Campos, sister of Chris, Sam Roberts, she who owns pigs and snakes, Pat Duffy, Dennis Falcone, Matt Kleinschmidt, Dale Dudley, Holly from the Gulf, Steve Tucci, the great God. Bless I'm not America. FaceTiming with you. I don't know who that is. Some, oh, if it's one of you assholes, we're gonna have we're gonna have issues. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't want to call anyone who's listening to us an asshole. Uh, Vic's Nether Fluids, Carl's Deviated Septum, Casey's Wet T-shirt, Bernie and Sid, Martha from Arkansas's daughter, Ron Bennington, and Fez Watley. Okay. No, it's not one of our listeners, so it's okay. And Fizz Watley, who supported this show, has never gone unappreciated. Listen to our Sirius XM show on the Faction Talk channel, Sirius M XM channel 103, Saturdays at 7, 7 p.m. Eastern, Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, on demand, and other times at Jim McClure's pleasure. Many thanks to our listeners whose voicemail and topic ideas make this job very easy. Go to our website at drsteve.com for schedules, podcasts, and other crap. Until next time. Check your stupid nuts for lumps, quit smoking, get off your asses, get some exercise. We'll see you in one week for the next edition of Weird Medicine. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Thank you. Thank you.